Hello and welcome back to the FL Studio music production course. This is lesson three, where I'm going to show you all of the important keyboard shortcuts, as well as all of the different tools available to help make your music production process as efficient as possible. This video isn't designed as a follow along, like the previous two. Instead, this video will act as a reference point for you to view when you want to remember how to use certain tools and shortcuts. So let's jump into things. Here I've taken the Drake style beat that I've recently made. We're going to start off in the playlist and go through the tools in the top left hand side of the screen. Starting with this drop down and going to the edit tab, there are a lot of different options. For this video, I'm going to take you through the essential tools. And in my eight years of using FL Studio, there are some tools that I haven't used once, simply because there are more efficient ways of using the program. On this section, the only important option is merge selected clips, which we can use Ctrl and G4. This allows us to simply highlight our clips by holding Ctrl, left click and dragging over the patterns, and then press Ctrl and G to merge them together. In truth, this isn't massively useful, and I've rarely used this. Under tools, we have quick quantize start time, and the keyboard shortcut for this is Shift and Q. This snaps all of the highlighted clips to the nearest grid, as you can see here. I've never made a change under the view section, so I feel that this is unnecessary. Snap to grid here is under the magnet tool, which we used in lesson one, so this is just a duplication of that functionality. You can ignore the select section as we use our mouse to select everything. The group section is also pretty unnecessary. Now for the zoom section. The only shortcuts you need to know for zoom are holding control and using the scroll button on your mouse to zoom in and out, just like this. Or you can left click and drag up here. You can also zoom out vertically by left click and dragging up here. For time markers, the only important setting is creating a loop, but this can be done by double clicking dragging up here. And that's all of the important tools from this section. Now we have snap to grid, which again changes the interval between the movement of each pattern or clip. The smaller the increment, the more freely your patterns can be moved. We have the draw tool, which we can use to draw our patterns into the playlist. Although I prefer using the paint tool as you can add multiple patterns in one go. This delete option here is unnecessary as you can just stay on the paint mode and right click to delete. The next two tools are the mute and slip tool which again are completely unnecessary as there's more efficient ways of muting and moving patterns around. This slice tool here is super useful. You can select this and left click and drag to cut certain parts of the pattern out. Then you have the select tool, which you can use by pressing control, which I showed earlier, and the zoom tool, which is unimportant because we went through zooming earlier. Now for the keyboard shortcuts, I'm going to go through these super quick for you. Holding control and left click and dragging over clips selects them all. Pressing control and B duplicates these. This is a faster alternative to Ctrl and C to copy and Ctrl and V to paste. Pressing Shift and any of the arrows moves these patterns up, down, left or right in the playlist. Note that these will move by the snap to grid. If you want to move these in smaller increments, then hold Alt while you do this. Moving on to the piano roll, there are a few options under the wrench tool. All of these can be used, but the most important ones are the randomized tool, the strum tool and the scale levels tool. After pressing control and left click and dragging over your MIDI notes, you can select the randomized tool to randomize the velocities down here. This simply means that some notes will be louder in volume than others. Using the strum tool will offset the beginning position of notes where they're playing at the same time, as if you were strumming them on a guitar. And finally, scale levels brings the velocity of all notes up or down in line with each other. For keyboard shortcuts, these are all the same as the ones in the playlist. The only extra ones that I use is highlighting your melody and pressing Ctrl U to slice these up by your snap to grid. Also, if you make a mistake, you can press Ctrl and Z to undo your changes. And that wraps this lesson up. Now that you have all of the important keyboard shortcuts, you'll be able to make beats far more efficiently, which will help speed up your music production learning process. Make sure to come back to this video to reference the shortcuts if you ever find that later in the course you're struggling to remember any of these.